What's going on, everyone? Happy Wednesday to everyone. Hopefully everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Wednesday edition of the Pandemic Update for Wednesday, February 21st, 2024. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. This is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and other viruses that could be a threat to you. So hit that like and subscribe button down below if you want to learn more and stay informed. And if you want to help keep others informed, by all means, share this with anyone you know. All right, starting off today, Joe Biden, fundraiser, co-host, Hiam Saban and Casey Wasserman test positive for COVID and will miss the Los Angeles event. So here's the deal. If you're going to have contact with the President of the United States, you still have to undergo testing protocols. While I may be safe to come see you, or I may be allowed to come see you without even taking a COVID test, that's not the case for the President. There are still COVID testing protocols that are in place, and the two co-hosts that were going to be at his Los Angeles event, yep, they tested positive for COVID. The President's still going to go out there but he's not going to have his co-host. All right, remember yesterday we talked about confirmed measles cases in Florida? Well, the outbreak in Florida at the Manatee Bay Elementary School has now gotten even bigger. It was five cases yesterday. Now it has jumped up to six cases, and this is just since the first case was reported on Friday. We'll have to keep following us. Maybe it'll continue going bigger. Hopefully it doesn't, but uh, you're talking about Florida here, and they're not very good at containing viruses in Florida. All right, here's something that's not good. COVID death toll in the U.S. likely 16% higher than official tally study says. We've suspected this for a long time. We've mentioned this for a long time. The death toll total tally in the United States, the current one, we know it's an undercount. It may even be higher than 16% for all we know. All right, continuing on now, taking a look at this. Respiratory illness increases in eastern Kentucky. And yeah, that's, it's no surprise. There's a lot of states right now that are seeing uh, illnesses increasing, such as COVID, flu, influenza, A, B, RSV is all on the increase in some places. It's happening right now. It's a sad state of reality of what's happening. Will everything eventually trend down? Of course it will. It's just taking a little longer than normal to do so. All right, moving on to this. Chicago Public Schools ranked number one among other large cities for reading improvement after COVID and pandemic. That's good news, but I do have a problem with this headline. We're not after the pandemic. The pandemic is still ongoing. When you read these stories, keep in your mind, they're not thinking clearly. We're still in the middle of the pandemic. Cases are still ongoing. Deaths are still far too high to call it an endemic. If we could ever get deaths down to really low numbers, then I would be comfortable with saying the words endemic. All right, look at this. Do you know someone who is sick or positive with COVID right now? That was a poll question I did yesterday. Do you know someone who tested positive for COVID right now? I figured, you know what? Let's put an extra response with this. I put the obvious ones, yes and no. But then I put no, but someone who's sick. So, yes, 33.3%. No, 32.7%. But then there was no, but someone was sick. That was 34%. What does that equal up to? Well, 67% of people said, yeah, I know someone who is sick right now. Yeah, that's that's a lot of people that are either sick with COVID or something else. Now, this was not a huge uh, vote. We've had other votes that have gone into the thousands. This was one of our smaller votes, only 300 votes yesterday. But you get the idea here. The majority of the people said, yes, they know someone with COVID or no but someone who is sick, you know, one of those, it's not COVID viruses, or they haven't tested for it, or it just keeps coming up negative, whatever the case may be. All right, taking a look now at the latest air quality data, and you will see across the United States a generally mixed picture. So you can see east of the Mississippi River, ooh, not that good. Look at all these oranges and yellows. Yeah, that's pretty bad. But then you look at the West Coast. West Coast is actually not too bad, though. You do go up into Canada, and there are some issues, like Alberta camera. To take a look at that up in Alberta. 
Yeah, Alberta's not doing all that great today. You see some reds. So that's something you should be concerned of. If you want to follow my other channel where I talk about the weather, we didn't do a video there today. We'll probably get back to doing a video tomorrow, but it's at Climate Data Report, and we talk all things weather on that channel. All right, taking a look at EMS calls for Tuesday in Philadelphia. There were 724 EMS incidents. I suspect today's number, when it comes out tomorrow, will be a little bit higher. I saw oh so many ambulances when I was out and about this morning and early this afternoon. Now, mind you, that was in the suburbs, but it just seemed like everywhere I go, there's another ambulance, there's another siren, there's another ambulance. Let's do a live look in at the Philadelphia suburbs right now and see what's going on. And wow, even at this time of night, we're late with the update today. It is 6.50, and yeah, there's still 15 active calls right now on all kinds of different things as well. So that is not good to see, and look at that, another cardiac arrest call again today. Seems like every time we do our update now, someone's having cardiac arrest. That's just not good. Taking a look at Chester County, Pennsylvania, uh, not as many calls, but there are some calls to be had at this time. All right, we have to take a look at Biobot. Yes, unfortunately, I have something not so good to show you with Biobot, but don't be alarmed. Don't be alarmed. Okay, Biobot wastewater for COVID on the national level. Take a look here. Yes, it went up again. But there's a lot of people thinking, well, hey, maybe that is overdone. It is possible that Biobot is overdone. But again, a rise is, is a rise, and we have to take it seriously. Why do we have to take it seriously? Because ultimately, any uh, higher transmission is not good. It means your chances of getting infected are higher. And taking a look at the regions here, you can see the northeast rose ever so slightly. The south rose somewhat. And the north road, so what? But the west coast did at this time drop a little bit, and that's good to see some dropping in the west coast. But again, hey, a rise is a rise, and this is not good. Hopefully, we will see things starting to go back down again next week, or they may even correct this lower as they do sometimes. All right, let's take a look at a few wastewater sites around the country now. And I thought we would come out to California today. You may have noticed on Twitter, I tweeted a few wastewater sites out last night. One of them was San Francisco. And take a look at this. San Francisco is actually seeing, we're going to click right on COVID. San Francisco is actually seeing a small rise at this time. They saw a small rise that was brief in nature back in January. But look at this now. If you can see it just above where I'm located here on the camera, uh, you can see here they are having a small rise once again for COVID. So that is not something that we like to see. And COVID at this time, San Francisco, though levels are low, we'll have to monitor it. Could it be a brief rise or is it going to turn into something else? Only time will tell. But again, it is something that we have to keep an eye on. Now let's hop on a flight and go to the east in the United States, or actually let's drive across country because I think that's safer at this time. You're safer when you're by yourself, not surrounded by people on an airline. And we want to take a stop in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, where we do notice here. Take a look at this. Take note. COVID levels. They are starting to rise in Winston-Salem. They already were at high levels. RSV is low at this time. Influenza A, it's coming up high, but it doesn't look like it's really all that high on the chart. Influenza B is rising ever so slightly. Norovirus is also starting to rise at this time. That's not good. And you can see the other viruses, aside from hepatitis A, are not much of an issue at this time. And Mpox, actually no, there is a detection of Mpox back on February 12th. So that is not good to see. And let's do one more wastewater site. How about we come up here? How about we come up to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania? We have not checked that in a while. What is going on in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania? And we do see, wow, take a look at this. Since February 6th, COVID, it is really starting to go up. That's not something that we like to see. And it already was at high levels. RSV is high, but flat at this time. Influenza A is uh, flat. Influenza B is rising at this time. Norovirus is high and Rising even higher. That's not good to see. And coming down here, there were some detections of hepatitis A. And it looks like there was on February 12th a detection of Mpox in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Which, by the way, is the capital of Pennsylvania. Not good to see uh, COVID rising here. But I suspect, 
I'm just guessing when I say this, but based on what I am seeing and hearing through dispatch, all the ambulances I'm seeing, I suspect things are starting to rise, not just for COVID, but all the viruses once again in Pennsylvania. Something's definitely going on because it has been getting busier. Outside of Philadelphia County, it's been getting busier. I'm hearing so many social media, Facebook postings of people saying they are sick. I'm hearing people calling out sick from work, people leaving work because they're sick. Yeah, there's there's definitely a lot of stuff going around in the state, in my state of Pennsylvania right now. Let's take a look at Walgreens, and we will see what the weekly levels this week are at Walgreens. And we can see the national positivity this week, it did drop. That's a good thing to see the national positivity at Walgreens drop to 24.1%, down by 2% from the prior week was 26 0.2% and total tests 15,930. It, now this is a big uh, drop, 24,815. Let's take a look at a few states, shall we? Kansas City, 18%. That's down by 5.8% from 23.9%. Total testing also dropped 133 versus 201. Then taking a look at Iowa, 25% this week versus 26.2% last week. That is down by 1.2%. Total tests, 56 versus 84. So testing was down. That's a legitimate drop. Utah, 12.7% this week, 16% last week, down 3.3%. Total testing down big time, 63 versus 131. Again, that is another legitimate drop. Alabama. 25.9% this week. Prior week was 25.4%. That's a difference of up 0.4%. Not something we like to see. Total test, 259 versus 417. Big testing drop. And I think that's why your positivity started to rise again. Let's do one more state. Delaware. Positivity rate, 20.8%. The prior week was 34%. Difference of down, 13.2%. 77 tests versus 100. That is a decrease in testing. And your cases are likely dropping because look at that positivity rate falling. JN.1 variant leads the way at 96.4%. It is the dominating variant in the United States at this time. You can see flu levels. They remain high and very high in a large number of states at this time but there are some states now that have actually gone down to minimal puerto rico not a state but it's a place that went down to minimal it's included on here you can see alaska went down to minimal and believe it or not nevada went down to minimal despite the super bowl being in las vegas just over a week and a half ago it's pretty remarkable isn't it i think it is that that's fantastic news and I'm not hearing any rumblings about a major COVID surge there either, despite the Super Bowl going on. Good news. All right, New Jersey today, 622 hospitalizations. 69 out of 70 hospitals reported. 30 people on a ventilator. 96 people were discharged. And in the ICU today, 75 people in the ICU. So the number of people in the ICU in New Jersey continues to drop. The number of people testing positive in your neighbor up in New York State. That's dropping as well. 971 positive tests. Again, another day below 1,000. We'll take it. That's good news. Let's take a look at what's going on with the hospitalizations. Eh, hospitalizations, they dropped again, but not by much. In fact, the ICU number actually rose. Uh, 1,461 people in the hospital and 186 people in the ICU. That ICU number did rise by 20. Never a good thing to see the number of people in the ICU rise but it is what it is it's the start of a new week i suspect it'll probably drop again tomorrow Alrighty, folks that's all i have for you today we'll have a whole bunch more states for you tomorrow as we normally would on thursday and if you enjoyed this update give it a thumbs up if you want to see more content like this by all means subscribe to my channel down below and of course share this with anyone you know and if you want to support the channel there's ways to do that down below I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Wednesday evening. Thanks for watching, and see you all again tomorrow.